Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Jan from uh, Nonna's Restaurants. And here this morning to demystify a little of Italian cooking. Okay, so the basis of any good risotto is its onion to start off with. So we're using a nice mild white onion. So a little tips, chop it in half, keep the cork there so it's much easier when you're actually chopping it. Make some insertions down the way, a couple tucked underneath. And then just tuck your fingers nice and simply underneath, let the knife do the work. A good sharp knife rather than a blunt knife actually makes life easier. Remember to tuck those fingers underneath. Okay, and then we've got some nice uniform chopped onions, nice and simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to saute those off in the pan with a little olive oil. Uh, not too high a heat, so we get a nice translucency to the uh, onions rather than uh, any colour on there. And then we're going to uh, toast the grains of the risotto after. So now we're going to sort of saute the onions, we've got them nicely chopped, just a little dash of sort of a, a mild olive oil, not an extra virgin olive oil. Um, just warm that through, don't get it actually too hot. If you get it too hot then we're going to sort of, sort of burn some of the onions and get the colour, which is not the intention. So, let's put half our sort of onions in there, etc. Always have a trusty wooden spoon, it's your friend when you're actually doing the risotto. So by slow cooking them here, you're just sort of softening them and getting that nice sort of mild, mild flavour out of them. What kind of heat have you got those on now? I've actually got that on, uh, uh, on, we're on halogen, sort of number five, so it's sort of say middle, middle, middle sort of ring. Still got heat in there and it's nicely sort of softening them through. Probably take two, two to sort of three minutes on there. Not looking to colour those, you're just yeah, just soften them. just soften them. Yeah, just whirl them through because you just it's just like almost like the, the little backbone of a sort of risotto. Um, once we've got that, then we're going to sort of uh, toast the rice. That's how they call it, toasting the rice there. So all the sort of uh, grains are sort of coloured, and then we're going to add some uh, white wine there. And that's, that's a, a sort of great point because the, the rice is almost wanting to sort of drink that white wine in and sort of ab absorb it. So now we're going to sort of toast the cannaroli uh, rice. We've got the onions nice and soft. We're going to sort of add those in there. And I'd say sort of a, a good handful for sort of each person. So we're going to cook for a, a couple of people. So you can see when the, the grain starts off, it's, it's pretty white. And as we're sort of toasting it, it starts to slightly uh, sort of uh, change colour. I want to keep it on a me medium high, medium high sort of heat there. Really trying to coat every sort of uh, grain in there with that sort of olive oil. And then you, you'll hear it sort of crying out then for a, for a drink of uh, a drink of wine. Now all, all the sort of grains are nicely toasted and we add a, a good uh, glug of uh, a, a white wine. So, wow, yeah, there we go. So probably a, a, good, a good glass full there. As you can see straight away, lovely aroma is sort of coming off there. Really, really my favourite part of it. And some of that alcohol has evaporated there. Again, don't have it on too high heat, so sort of uh, medium high heat and then we're going to start adding our stock. I always like to keep the sort of stock uh, nice nice and warm already, not boiling hot, just uh, just not nice and warm. You'll see all the all the grains sort of slightly sort of uh, change, change colour uh, and it, it starts to get a little sort of drier etc and that's uh, ready, ready for the wine. And now it's like a lot of all the um, liquid has been absorbed here and you start adding your stock and always do it like sort of a, a, a ladle at a time and what we'll find is the grains slowly slowly start to uh, absorb all that sort of stock and when you sort of see it slightly sort of drying out again it's the time to add sort of more stock. Okay so what we're going to do we're just at the stage where some of the ingredients that we're going to add in a bit later we're just going to saute these lovely little uh, morels just in some nice butter and some black pepper and a sort of a, a pinch of salt 
uh, to get the sort of butter nice and foaming. Uh, and then one thing that we sort of not talked about is uh, sort of seasoning. I'm going to be seasoning these mushrooms for later, but I've sort of not seasoned the risotto purposely till we get to the end, till we add all the, the ingredients in, and then let's taste it and see, see where it goes. Because by adding parmesan and other ingredients, you're adding some natural seasoning in there as well. So that should be coming slightly. So, the cracked black pepper, and then every chef's favourite ingredients, a bit of uh, mould and salt, and salt is one of my, uh, sec not secret ingredients, one of the things that I actually love all sort of different styles of, of salt, good salt, etc. You can see there, I just want to get you know, a slight bit of colour onto these mushrooms. So, we're getting some nice colour on the mushrooms. So I'm going to add those near the, the final part of the cooking. For those who are done, we're just going to leave them to one side. Go back to the risotto, see if it's needing any more sort of stock. Okay. You can actually sort of see now that the uh, the grains are sort of starting to sort of swell and they've absorbed all that sort of stock. And again, sort of like vegetarians, uh, you can use a, a vegetarian stock as well there. I'd probably recommend adding some, uh, adding some thyme, thyme into there, some nice hard herbs as well, just to get some extra flavours in the, in the vegetable stock. Uh, so we'll just keep adding that sort of stock, as I say, keep that sort of process uh, process going so it doesn't get too dry, and sort of nice and moist. Mushrooms are done. And then um, when we sort of combine it all together, we're going to add the mushrooms, then we're going to add some parmesan, then we're going to add a good sort of knob of butter, and then we're going to let the risotto just sit, sit for a while, just leave it be, and then we're going to sort of uh, plate it up. So going back to that tip, you know, leave it moist as well because that rice is going to keep cooking while it's just resting. Okay, so now we're at sort of the final point. So there's a risotto. So just uh, keep testing and keep tasting the risotto. So you still need a sort of like nice firm bite in the in the risotto, not sort of too mushy. Uh, so with the other ingredients, we're going to sort of compile them all together. This is really really simple. So as you can sort of see, it's still really moist in there. So the mushrooms that we sauteed in the butter, I'm just going to sort of add, add some of those in there. Nice and simple. Pull that down, get that little sort of stir through, so the warming through. Then we're going to add a, a good amount of uh, grana padana. So give that a, a good sort of stir. And then this ingredient that everyone sort of misses out, a really nice knob of butter. Because what you'll also do, you'll see it gives it a nice sheen to the risotto. So first we'll sort of stir all that in. Remember we keep talking about uh, tasting, so let's taste the seasoning. A little bit of uh, pepper, a little hint more of the sort of the salt. Give it one last stir. Let it sit for a while, maybe sort of pop a lid on it. Gather your plate and then we're literally going to plate up and let's see how good this risotto is. Just add, elevates it just from a regular risotto. So you can see here, you know, really nice, still moist there. Got a bit of a sheen to it there. And we'll do and we'll start sort of plating it up here. Probably do finish it off just a little bit more down on the top, etc. So, risotto with mushrooms, parmesan, and white wine. Simple. Okay, so the second risotto is going to be a gorgonzola and walnut. Uh, we've got our um, base there with sort of the white wine 
all the stock that's through there. It's nicely cooked, still al dente. So what we're going to do, get some nice crumbled sort of walnuts, a little, little sort of handful popped in. And then I'm going to crumble some of the uh, the gorgonzola blue cheese. You don't need a, an abundance because it's uh, very sort of strong. I'm going to add a little parmesan, just it's almost like a, a seasoning, like the salt. Little small amount of butter. Give that a little stir, let sort of the gorgonzola sort of melt through. All that sort of blue cheese run through all that risotto. Is that unsalted butter? It is unsalted butter, that one, yeah. Um, so you can see, really, as the heat gets through to that cheese, you get that, that vein of blue running through the risotto there. So again, I always sort of like let it rest, let it sort of sit just for a minute or two, and then sort of plate up, and then just add a sort of, uh, add a little cheese onto the top, so it's, that's gonna melt when you're sort of taking it through to the table as well. One thing I haven't done, like you should always do, give it a good test, Mm. Just a hint, hint of, hint of, hint of pepper. A little bit of salt. Finish it off. Now plate it up again, as you can sort of see. Really nice and really nice and moist. Still lots of sort of liquid in there. Really great. Right. Like that there. A little bit more sort of gorgonzola, just on the top. Crumbled, thin slice, thick slice. There you go. And that will just really sort of soften as you get to the table. So, gorgonzola and walnut risotto, very, very simple. Let's match that up to a nice uh, red wine, and we'll talk about red wines later. 